Good afternoon and welcome to Across the Fence. I'm Jolay Whitney. We begin today with some Latin in Wino Veritas, which translated means in wine there is truth. How about this for Veritas? In Vermont, there is a growing industry of winemakers, farmers, and UVM researchers who are taking Vermont's grown grapes from the root to the fruit and making a style of wine that's gaining national and international recognition and awards. The style of wine is referred to as low intervention or natural wine. As Keith Silva learned, there is nothing artificial about this Vermont product, and it's always au naturel and absolutely au courant. Grapes are thought to be the first fruit cultivated by humans. Scientists estimate that this occurred simultaneously about 11,000 years ago in the regions around modern-day Israel and Armenia. It would take another four to 5,000 years before viticulture, the cultivation of grapes specifically for winemaking, would occur. Archaeologists have found evidence of a prehistoric winery in an Armenian cave, which included a wine press, fermentation and storage vessels, and withered vines. Fast forward many millennia to the shores of Lake Champlain and Ellison Estate, a vineyard in Grand Isle where the primeval process practiced by those Stone Age winemakers has been given new life, new wine from old jars so to speak, which wine enthusiasts of today call natural wine. Kendra Knappert co-owns and operates Ellison Estate Vineyard. We first caught up with her early in the year when she was pruning vines to get them ready for the growing season. So yeast actually naturally live on the skins of grapes. If you have grapes and you smush them up and you let them be, usually the yeast will start fermenting that sugar um, into alcohol and they'll release carbon dioxide and eventually that sugar will become completely fermented and that is the process of the natural process of making wine. These are actually just beautiful. Grapes are harvested in early fall. What Napic grows are a cross between varietals of well-known vinifero grapes and lesser known species of Native American grapes. There are actually crosses between Vitis vinifera, which are the grape varieties that most people are familiar with, so Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Riesling, Chardonnay, and also Native American grapevines. So if you pay attention when you're driving down the highway or taking a walk in the woods, you'll see tons of grapevines naturally, um, natively growing in this part of the country. Most of them are Vitis riparia. There's been a lot of research done with University of Minnesota and also Cornell to create these hybrid varieties. So that's what we're growing because they grow well here. What interests Napic and all winemakers is terroir, a French word that means the combination of factors like soil, sunlight, and climate that give a particular wine its distinctive character. Wine is a taste of place, so you can grow a um, a certain variety of grape in Bordeaux and then grow it in Napa and those wines, even though you're growing the same variety, will have very different characteristics because the place that the grape is being grown is represented. Um, so that's the idea. Speaking of French words, one of the styles of wine Napa has bottled for her brand, Ellison Estate Vineyard, falls into the category of ancestral sparkling wine. As the French say, Petillon Naturel. We make a lot of different styles of wine. Um, over 50% of our production is sparkling, so we're, we're known for our, our Petit Naturels or Pet Nats, um, which are just really vibrant and um, fresh, exciting. The excitement of Pet Nats goes beyond taste. This champagne style of wine requires disgorging, or in French, dégourmant. However you say it, it's an integral and messy step in the production process of sparkling wine. Rob Napic explains. And so that means the fermentation finishes in the bottle. And so you can see here, there's this little cap, what we call it. And um, this is sort of the dead yeast and sediment that happens from the end of the fermentation that finishes in the bottle. And so as the fermentation finishes, carbon dioxide gets produced and it's in a sealed container. And that's what gives it, makes sparkling wine sparkle. So we go through the process of actually opening up each bottle 
And when we open it up, this cap gets shot out. And then we recap them and top them off until it looks like this. And so you see there's still a little sediment left because we're doing this all sort of by hand, uh, but uh, the, most of the sediment gets out there. And then we let it sit upright like this and it clarifies. And then from disgorging to release date is about five weeks or so. The Napics did not start out to be farmers or winemakers. While Kendra, who was born and raised in Vermont, has gone all in on their agricultural business, Rob continues to work off farm. He chairs the physics department at Norwich University. Before becoming a full-time farmer and winemaker, Kendra was a practicing veterinarian. When I shifted my life, I, I realized I wanted to build something and I wanted to do something where I could um, practice more creativity. I think in a lot of ways it was really beneficial that Rob and I had no formal winemaking education. Um, I took a viticulture class at UVM and, and, a, and a wine course in college. That does not create a formal education. We love this and it's, we love the lifestyle that goes with it, but yeah, no, we have to make this work as a business. Um, and I think it's a, it's a very viable industry in this state. I am excited to see where we are in 15 years. When the story of Vermont's natural wine industry gets written, it will begin with Deidre Heakin, Caleb Barber, and their winery, La Garagista. Deirdre Heakin, she has been a leader to many of us who are kind of newer to this industry and um, has really led the path as far as creating beautiful natural wines that have, have gotten national and international attention. And, you know, thankfully they were one of the first people that we, we talked with before we started. Deirdre is one of those really brave people that stepped into the natural wine world with only so much information. She had some really fantastic Bethany Pelletier is a graduate research her. assistant with UVM's Department of Plant and Soil Science. She just started experimenting and started trying things. She and her partner founded La Garagista Vineyards um, and wrote a book about what they discovered, what they learned in the process of doing all of this, and became pretty successful winemakers who are really well known throughout the Northeast as somebody who sort of paved the way for this natural wine industry. You can spray less if you just have good pruning management. As with any agricultural industry trying to get off the ground, farmers have questions. That's where Pelletier's research at UVM's Horticultural Research and Education Center comes in. I'm looking at some of the common pesticides that natural winemakers are using and looking at uh, their general efficacy. So how well they work, um, how much disease they prevent, uh, how well the grapes turn out at the end of it all. So we've had a lot of winemakers in the Northeast that are interested in more of these low impact or more environmentally friendly methods. However, oftentimes these methods need more frequent sprays. So we're kind of trying to pinpoint, okay, how many sprays is necessary so that way we can sort of fine-tune this organic, natural program. Best management practices being like the key word. How can we most effectively grow these grapes so that they're tasty, delicious, beautiful, but they're also not bad for the environment? If Heakin was the catalyst to get other farmers interested in making natural wine in Vermont, then the research Pelletier is doing at UVM is building on that foundation so that future winemakers will have the tried, true, and tested methods that will create a viable and sustainable industry. The next step is we need to grow more grapes. Um, we need to plant more grapes. We need more hands in the soil doing this. Um, and I think the steps for UVM is just continuing to support that, continuing to support kind of those best management practices. The university wants to support these people, but it takes sort of these people that are willing to look outside the box, willing to make a jump uh, with faith into just going out and trying this new thing. This variety is really prone to kind of shattering off the stem. So Wine can be intimidating, I think, uh, historically to people. And what we're trying to do, and many other people in the state, is trying to um, create a really approachable, delicious product. We just want to make the best wine that we can make. And I think it's been pretty exciting seeing what we can do. At this point in our story, you're probably thinking, Keith, enough with the history, the winemaking, the research. How's it taste? Which brings me to a crossroads. 
This is Crossroads in Waterbury. We're a Vermont liquor outlet and also have a ton of craft beer. But recently we expanded our wine section. I'm very passionate about wine and natural wine, so this is my family's business. Vermont natural wines are sold throughout the Northeast. Given its name and that it's tucked away around the corner from the checkout counter, the wine room in Crossroads Beverage and Deli felt like the right spot for a beverage that is, so far, a hidden gem. And oh yeah, the taste? Vermont natural wine is usually very tart and kind of an intense flavor. The grapes have very thick skin um, because of the cold climate. Um, so they're usually very dark, um, super tart, very dry, um, and lots of times bubbly because lots of people make pet nuts with them. Natural wine also is a great food wine. Usually you really want to eat food, with, especially with Vermont natural wine. You get a taste of Vermont. You get a taste of place. It's been said, no wine before it's time. If so, then the time is now. And the wine is naturally from Vermont. In Grand Isle, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. To learn more about the University of Vermont Extension's grape program, visit the website on your screen. There you'll find links to a grape grower's guide, a fruit blog, and the Vermont Grape and Wine Council, which promotes grapes and fruit growing and winemaking in Vermont. Join me as I raise a glass to everyone working behind the scenes here at WCAX. Cheers, I'm Jolie Whitney, have a good one.